All right, recording should be going. I hear a couple people logging on, so let me repost this sign in. Make sure you sign in. Um, if you weren't here Tuesday night, I covered the uh, hip, thigh, and knee, so that recording is up on YouTube. Um, if you go to my Google Drive, there should be a, a Word document in there that has the link to the YouTube channel, so you can watch that if you want to. And I also posted tonight's slides on my Google Drive, so let me know if you um, had any trouble finding those. But if not, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Oh, and uh, I'll give my speech on Dr. K again. Um, so number one, he, in my opinion, is very clear and very straightforward in lecture. So um, he doesn't give you really anything that's like extra fluff. So you really need to know everything that he's saying. And also his... Uh, like his concept check questions and especially the like what he calls exam questions those are extremely 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 similar to the style of questions that um, he'll ask you in the exam <laughs> so make sure uh, you know that you're comfortable with those and what I did the weekend before this exam is I double sped through his lectures since he doesn't actually like post those questions with the slide and I made sure that I was like very comfortable with answering all of them. And then uh, also like look at them, um, look at the wrong answers and make sure that you can, you know, tell why the wrong answers, what makes them incorrect. So uh, I, yeah, I think he's very predictable, um, but he does like to use imaging in his exams. So uh, make sure you're comfortable with the examples of the imaging he gave. Because uh, you'll see, like, something similar on the exam. Okay. So, uh, I left this in here. So, um, if you can tell by his practice questions, he really likes to test actions, um, you know, based on different nerve injuries. So, I would study uh, these types of flowcharts that he has in his lectures. And, uh, you know, make sure you learn it this way because this is how he likes to test it. And then same here. Okay, so let's start with the anterior compartment. So um, if you had an injury to the deep fibular nerve, which is doing the anterior compartment, what type of sensory deficits would you expect? Not motor deficits, sensory. Right. Right, between, yeah, between the big toe and the second toe. So that right there is kind of a very, um, you know, like high yield fact. Like if you see any sort of question stem and it mentions a sensory deficit between the first and second toe, um, it's just like, you know, like game over. Like your answer is deep fibular nerve. So definitely make sure, make sure that you know that. And I think he had like a practice question that made that point too within his lecture. Okay, but um, other than that, obviously, you need to be familiar with the muscles of the anterior compartment. Okay, so here we have the lateral compartment, which is um, the superficial fib fibular nerve and uh, he mentioned this muscle right here the fibularis tertius 
So what compartment is the fibularis tertius located in? Anyone? Right, the anterior compartment. And what is the action of that muscle? Right, it's a weak everter. So if we go back here, um, you can see that the primary compartments, uh, or sorry, actions at the anterior compartment is dorsiflexion, digital extension, and inversion. And then also we have weak eversion. So the only muscle in the anterior compartment that's actually a weak everter is the fibularis tertius. Okay. So next I wanted to point out, so this relationship here is very important. So you want to make sure you know that the anterior tibial artery is running with the deep fibular nerve. Um, I believe last year on the practical they showed you this relationship and then they asked you for the artery. So make sure you know that these two are running together. Okay. Okay, so, foot drop, which results in what's known as steppage gait, so D right here, is characterized by an inability to perform what action? Do you guys remember? Right, dorsiflexion. And it's involved, um, so an, an injury to what nerve? So which nerve is injured in foot drop? Right, the common fibular nerve. So make sure you know that. Um, these two here. So a swing out gait, this is also called circumduction, and this is most common in stroke patients. And then the waddling gait, um, I believe that has to do with weakness of pelvic muscles. So um, really the two to know here are foot drop, and then which leads to a steppage gait. So this high stepping gait, and what phase of the gait cycle are we talking about here? Right, so swing phase. Okay, so the big thing to know, um, or not really a big thing, but one thing he pointed out is the fact that the soleus and then the two heads of the gastrocnemius, these three muscles together are known as what? Right, the triceps serrae. So make sure you're familiar with that. And um, also, you know, of course, each compartment, you need to start associating a nerve and an artery. So make sure you know that this is tibial nerve, and then what artery is associated with the posterior compartment.
right, the posterior tibial artery. So tibial nerve and posterior tibial artery. And what was the nerve and artery for the anterior compartment? Anybody? Yeah, deep fibular nerve, anterior tibial artery, correct. Okay. Um, and then here, here's that relationship right here. Uh, so the anterior tibial artery, oh, I actually beat myself to it, I just asked you that. So anterior tibial artery is running with the deep fibular nerve in the anterior compartment. Okay, and then the fibular artery, this is a branch of what? Fibular artery. So not popliteal. That's correct, common fibular nerve gives you deep and superficial fibular. What about the artery? What is the fibular artery branching from? No, sciatic is a nerve, so fibular artery. Close, not, okay, so is it the anterior or posterior tibial artery? Posterior tibial, right, correct. So make sure you know that the fibular artery is a branch of the posterior tibial artery. Um, in my opinion, one of the most confusing things about the legs are the tibial and fibular nerves and arteries. So you really have to get it straight that, um, yeah, in the leg, you have a tibial nerve and then you have an anterior and posterior tibial artery. And then you have one fibular artery and a superficial and a deep fibular nerve. So you just really have to like hammer that in because um, it's very easy to get those confused. Okay. Yeah, same here. It really, I mean, it takes a long time to get that down. All right, so partial tunnel syndrome. Um, you definitely need to know the contents of the tarsal tunnel. So has everyone heard this mnemonic here, Tom, Dick, and Harry? Yes, no? Yeah, so I, I think he mentioned that in class. So um, tibialis posterior flexor digitorum longus, the posterior tibial artery, the tibial nerve. So remember, one tibial nerve, two tibial arteries. So um, posterior tibial artery, tibial nerve, and then flexor hallucis longus. So make sure that you know all of these and you know the order because they um, will definitely tag one of these on your practical. All right, and then I wanted to point this out right here. So make sure you realize that these two tendons, the tendons of the flexor hallucis longus and the flexor digitorum longus, they're crossing in the foot. So make sure you take a, you know, time to look at this on your donor. Okay. Um, arterial supply is a very, very important. All right. So your anterior and posterior tibial arteries are branching from where? Where are they coming from? 
Right. The popliteal artery. Yep. And then your anterior tibial artery continues down into the foot as what artery? So once it crosses the ankle joint, what do you call it? Right, the dorsalis pedis artery. Correct. And then again, we can see the fibular artery is a branch of the posterior tibial. Okay, and then um, this slide isn't, like, I doubt he's, this is more of an EPC thing, so just showing you where to palpate the dorsalis pedis and uh, then the posterior tibial arteries. So probably not too big of a worry for MGA. Okay, this right here gets a lot of people, okay, so... Make sure that you know this. Okay, so great saphenous vein is traveling with what nerve? Right, the saphenous nerve. The saphenous nerve is a branch of? Right, the femoral nerve. How about um, the small saphenous vein? What is it traveling with? The sural nerves, right. Okay, so another question. The great saphenous vein is draining where? Draining into what vein? Where does it go? It travels up the medial side of the leg and then drains into right the femoral. And what opening does it have to pass through to get there? What is that opening called? The saphenous opening. Right, right. <clears throat> okay. And then the small saphenous vein, that's draining into what vein? So it's in the back of the knee, right, the popliteal, that's correct. And um, the sural nerves, where are they branching from? Right, the common fibular and tibial nerves. Okay, so this is how I would recommend studying, you know, Anytime you point out a nerve, you know, like the great saphenous, like ask yourself, do I know where this is going? Like, where is it going to end up? Or, you know, um, you know, like the, the, did I say nerve? I mean, so great saphenous vein, you know, where is it going? And then, you know, saphenous nerve, where is it coming from? So I definitely recommend um, studying that way. Like, make sure you know where things are going and where they're coming from. <clears throat> okay, so we have varicose and veins. Um, why should a, a surgeon be cautious when removing varicose veins? Why is that important? Right, right, there's nerves nearby. So the two, two cutaneous nerves you'd be most concerned about, yeah the saphenous nerve and the sural nerve. So since we have veins running close to those nerves, um, those are gonna be the main concern for a surgeon that's working on varicose veins. So that's really all you need to gather from this slide. Okay. Here is kind of another test in like, do you know where things are coming from? Okay, so here we have the anterior side of the leg. What is this nerve in green? What would you call, what would you call this nerve right here? 
Right, the deep fibular nerve. And then how about the one in blue? Superficial fibular. And those are coming from where? The common fibular, right. Okay, now we're back on the posterior side of the leg. What is this big nerve right up here? So close, we're not so, um, so not, so above, up higher. Right, sciatic, yeah. And then it's splitting into, uh, what's this here? What is this one? So, right, and then what is this one? Tibial, correct. <clears throat> and then your common fibular is going to split into these two, right? So deep fibular and then superficial fibular. So what I recommend is, um, you know, start up high and make sure that you can trace these nerves all the way down into the foot. And the same thing with the vasculature. So, you, you know, you have to know, you know, where everything's coming from and where everything's going. So draw it, draw it all out. Like put, you know, put the pieces together. Okay. So um, again, with the compartment syndrome, we talked about Tuesday night. Uh, so why would this be considered a medical emergency? Why do you not want to miss this? Anybody? Right, exactly. So, yeah, you have all of this neurovasculature here. So if the pressure is elevated within the compartment, this fascia isn't going to stretch. Instead, it's going to compress everything right here. Um, which obviously is going to lead to all sorts of symptoms, you know, ischemia of the leg, uh, you know, numbness, weakness, and that sort of thing. So um, you have to catch this early to save the tissue, and, uh, you know, that person's going to go to surgery, and they're going to perform uh, what's known as a fasciotomy to release this pressure within the compartment. And uh, I talked about this Tuesday night, but what you'll see in question stems is they describe the patient has pain beyond what is expected for their injury. So 10 out of 10 pain, you know, really terrible. The pain is much worse than, you know, what you would associate with that type of injury. And that's um, the most common way that you'll see compartment syndrome described. Okay, so let's go through the foot and ankle. <clears throat> um, you know, make sure you know the divisions of the foot. So forefoot, midfoot, and the hindfoot are also known as tarsus, metatarsus, and pedal phalanges. Um, so absolutely, 100%, you know, I'm sure um, on your upper limb exam, you were asked about the carpal bones, right? I'm betting yes. Yeah, so it, as you can imagine, it's going to be the same thing here. Um, you're going to be asked about the bones of the foot. So 100%, you know, if you learn these, that's very easy points on your practical. And I want to say they asked this last year um, using imaging. So I know he mentioned that there will be two images on your practical, so it wouldn't surprise me if uh, this wasn't one of them. Or, of course, they could set out uh, a model, like a bone model of the foot. Okay, so let's just go through these real quick. So what is number one?
Fibula number two. Tibia number three. Calcaneus four. Navicular number five. What's this one? Yeah, cuboid, and then yeah, and then your cuneiform. So medial, intermediate, and lateral cuneiforms. Okay, and then over here, what's number one? Calcaneus, and then two is. Talus, yeah. And then three is going to be the navicular, and then your medial, intermediate, and lateral cuneiforms, and then your cuboid. So definitely, definitely, definitely learn these. Okay, so the ankle joint, if you get a question um, about the joints here, it's going to be uh, based on their function. So at the talocrural joint, so the joint between the talus and the leg, this joint is responsible for dorsiflexion or plantar flexion. So that's all you need to know here. Where is the joint located? And then what is its function? <clears throat> okay. And then right here, we have the subtalar joint. So below the talus, this is responsible for inversion and eversion. And then two, the transverse tarsal joint. Um, I've honestly never heard it called this. So, you know, um, this joint is responsible for rotation. So if he asks you about one of these three joints, it's going to be based on their function. Okay. So the lateral and medial ligaments of the ankle. So the lateral ligament is going to help prevent excessive what? Right, excessive inversion. And um, do not stress about all these names. Like I know the names of the ligaments can be overwhelming, but if you look for certain clues in the names, it's gonna tell you where it's located. So any of the ligaments with fibular in the name, you know that's gonna be one of the lateral ligaments. Unless it's tibiofibular, so this is a syndesmotic ligament, but think about what the word is saying, between the tibia and the fibula, so you know that that's going to be a pyre. But any of these other ones, it has fibular in the name of it, so you can automatically you know, identify it as a lateral ankle ligament. So if you have a multiple choice question, um, and it's asking you, you know, about an inversion ankle sprain, and it says, like, which ligament is most likely to be injured, um, look for something with fibular in the name because you know it's on the lateral side of the leg. Okay, so the medial ankle ligament, um, what they like to do is call this the deltoid ligament in questions um, because that, you know, obviously can make it more tricky. So make sure Make sure you know the deltoid ligament is referring to the medial ligament of the ankle. So your deltoid ligament is going to prevent excessive what? Right, eversion. And, you know, if you're presented with a question, so you're going to be looking for anything with tibio in the name. So if you see tibia whatever, you know that's on the medial side. And then right there you have your answer. Okay, so this should like, um, this should make learning these ligaments a lot less stressful because you're just looking for this hint here to tell you which side of the ankle it's on. And um, honestly, like this is how I approached it in MGA and MSK this year. And, you know, I always got the questions right. So this should, you know, expedite the process. Okay, and then also make sure 
you understand what inversion and eversion mean. I know this trips a lot of people up. So if you have an inversion injury, you know, if you're in an exam, like do that motion with your foot and you can feel which ligament is being strained. So make sure that you associate inversion with a lateral ligament injury and then eversion with a medial ligament injury. And if you have to do those motions during the exam, you know, that's, that's totally fine. Um, but don't let that trip you up. Okay. Um, so, you know, nothing really new here. So again, you know, on the medial side is your deltoid ligament. And then you have your lateral ligaments associated with the fibula. And then this right here, the posterior tibiofibular ligament. So if you see tibio and fibular um, within the name of the ligament, this is a syndesmotic ligament connecting the tibia and the fibula. Okay, um, so don't let that throw you off when you're answering questions about the lateral or, or medial ligament. Okay. So, um, you want to know a little bit about ankle sprains. So are, first of all, are high or low ankle sprains more common? Right, high. And then uh, which ligament, or I'm sorry, it's actually low. So low ankle sprains are more common. Yeah, my bad. I about went along with you there. Okay, so yeah, low ankle sprain injuries are more common than high ankle sprains. And then which ligament, so he put a star on one of these ligaments and said this one is the one that's most commonly ruptured in a low ankle sprain or low inversion injury. So it's one of the ligaments on the lateral side <clears throat> right, the anterior talofibular. So this one right here. So I would make a note of that. So this ligament right here is the one that's most commonly injured in low ankle sprains. Okay, so he mentioned that a certain joint separates high from low ankle sprains. What was the name of that joint? Talocrural, right. So what is crural referring to? Right, the leg, yeah, so hopefully that helps. So the joint between the leg and the talus, that's gonna be your dividing line for high ankle sprains versus low ankle sprains. And um, again, your high ankle sprains are going to involve these syndesmotic ligaments. So the anterior and posterior tibiofibular ligaments are going to be involved in high ankle sprains. <clears throat> okay, so in an eversion ankle sprain, what ligament is most likely to be injured? You don't have to give me the in individual names, like what what is the like overall name? Right, the deltoid ligament. Correct. Okay. Um, so we definitely had an exam question about this slide right here last year. So I think, I think these pictures are a little bit, bit misleading because the bones are colored here, but 
if you focus on this picture here, this gives you um, everything that you need to know. Okay, so which bones are making up the lateral longitudinal arch? What bones are involved in the lateral longitudinal arch? Right, calcaneus, cuboid, and then what do you what would you call these? Right, metatarsals. Yep. Metatarsals four and five. And then the digits. Digits four and five. Okay. And then how about the medial longitudinal arch? What bones are involved? Right, first three metal tarsals, and then what are these called? The cuneiforms, the talus, and the calcaneus, right. And so the reason there's a star here, so make sure you know that the calcaneus is involved in both the lateral and the medial longitudinal arch. So know this, this picture right here, know that. And then also the transverse arch. So you have the three cuneiforms and the cuboid. Also know this, but I think the question was here. Okay. Is navicular part of the medial? Yes. Okay, so nothing um, super important here. You know, this is just showing how the ligaments are supporting the arch of the foot. I think um, in OPP, you eventually get into like which ligaments are holding up the medial versus lateral arch, but I don't, I don't remember being tested on this in MGA. Okay. So I put a box around this one here. Um, last year, this is the one they tagged, so the plantar calcaneum navicular ligament, the spring ligament. Um, apparently, this ligament here gives people a lot of problems, and it's off often um, responsible for a fallen arch. So they tagged this one on the practical, and they did it on the donor. So if anyone, you know, has a lot of these ligaments dissected, I don't know how many donors you guys have there in Knoxville, but if anyone has these dissected out well, I would definitely um, take a look at their foot. Okay. So, what is this nerve right here? What is this nerve called right here? Right, the deep fibular nerve. And um, what sensory deficit would you have if the, that nerve was injured? Right, so loss of sensation between the first and second digit, right? <clears throat> yeah, so make sure you know that deep fibular nerve is providing cutaneous or sensory innervation right here. That's something that's commonly asked. Okay, and then what is this artery? dorsalis pedis, right, and um, 
In the leg, what is that artery called? Right, the anterior tibial. Okay, and then this area right here, what did he call this? So where this artery and nerve is passing through this tunnel? Right, so the anterior tarsal tunnel, correct. <clears throat> Okay, um, so let's go through the foot. Um, so on the dorsal aspect of the foot, so you want to know that there's an extensor hallucis brevis and an extensor digitorum brevis. So two muscles to know on the top of the foot. Um, but here's where things get more complicated. Okay, so all of these layers of the plantar foot, um, you absolutely need to know them. Um, they're definitely going to tag a couple of these in your practical. So be prepared for that. And have you guys seen this before? This mnemonic? Have you seen this drawing? Has anyone here seen this? No? Okay, so this, this should help you out with memorizing. Um, the foot really stinks, like there's really no other way around it. Uh, but you really have to know this. Okay, so the mnemonic goes, a house fell down at dawn. Quiet people lumbered and lumbered for hours, for days, all hands planted dorsally. Okay, so what you're, you're going to do is you'll draw your foot out like this. And then if you follow these arrows, this is going to give you the four layers of the foot. So all hands are, sorry, uh, a house is abductor houses, and then fell down flexor digitorum brevis. And they say it fell down due to a breeze. So that's going to help you remember this brevis part. So a house fell down at dawn, abductor digiti minimi, and then you follow the arrows, quiet people, so quadratus plantae, lumbered and lumbered your lumbricals, for hours, flexor halicis brevis, for days, flexor um, digiti minimi, uh, all hands, abductor halicis, planted dorsally, so your dorsal and plantar interossei in the fourth layer. And then notice here that it's divided up into um, muscles innervated by the medial plantar nerve and then the lateral plantar nerve. Okay, so is this... I mean, I think most people in our class use this. Does everyone, like, understand how this works? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so make sure, um, she, I didn't draw this, Alex, um, someone in our class did. So she has order of the story, so you have to go like this for it to work. Um, but hopefully this will help you, like, you know, help expedite the memorizing process. Okay. So your medial and lateral plantar arteries. So we're on the plantar surface of the foot. Where are these coming from? So the terminal branches of, yeah, the posterior tibial artery, correct? Um, so I, I put a box here because this medial and lateral plantar fascia, don't worry about that. Um, the only thing that they might tag is the plantar aponeurosis. So, you know, if your group reflected this, um, you should still have this intact. So make sure, you know, um, yes, the muscles, but also be aware of this plantar aponeurosis. Okay. Um, and then, I, you know, I left these in here. You know, other than that mnemonic, um, this is just going to take time to memorize the layers of the foot. 
Okay, so your first layer, and then, you know, realize he said that, you know, his slides are, like, really nice. So um, everything on this side is innervated by the medial plantar nerve, and then over here, the abductor digiting minimi is the lateral plantar nerve. Okay, and then um, in the second layer, you have the quadratus plantae, and then your lumbricals. Okay, and then two tendons here crossing. What are these called? He pointed them out in lecture too. So the tendon of V is going to the big toe. Flexor hallucis, yep. And then how about this one? Flexor digitorum longus. Yeah, so make sure you also know the tendons that are in the foot. Um, because again, you know that one picture, it showed how they're helping to hold up the arches. So yeah, they're, they're still, you know, important down here. Okay, um, so the adductor halluses, uh, the reason I put a red box here, uh, they tagged this one last year, and this one can be tricky because, you know, yes, it is attaching to the big toe, but it's actually innervated by the lateral plantar nerve. So make sure, um, just make sure you're aware of that. Okay, what is this one right here? What is this tendon? So it's on the medial side. It's a really big one. Talked about it earlier. Anyone? Take a, take a guess. Not the spring. Yeah, so this one is your deltoid ligament. And then what is this one? Right, so that one's the fibular's longus. Okay. Um, and then last one here, which digit is the axis for um, abduction and adduction in the foot? Right, the second digit. Okay, and then again with the arterial supply. Um, <clears throat> so what you want to know here, uh, again with the anterior tibial becoming the dorsalis pedis, and then turning into the arcuate artery, giving off dorsal metatarsal. So these are near the metatarsals, and then dorsal digital arteries. And then... Right here, your posterior tibial artery, giving rise to the lateral and medial plantar arteries. And then you have, um, from the lateral plantar, you have the deep plantar arch. And then giving off plantar metatarsal and plantar digital. So yeah, definitely start, um, 
you know, just start from the top, start up at the thigh, and make sure that you can trace this blood supply all the way down into the foot. Okay. Um, and then again with these veins, okay, so your medial marginal vein is going to drain into what? Right, the great saphenous, and then the lateral marginal vein is going to drain into right, the small saphenous. Okay. Um, okay, so injury to the deep fibular nerve. So I've said several times, you know, sensory loss between the first and, and second digits of the toe. And then your motor symptoms are going to be what? Inability to... Right, dorsiflex the ankle. All right, and then how about carceral tunnel syndrome? What symptoms would be associated here? Right, weak intrinsic foot muscles, and then what about sensory symptoms? Where would you have loss of sensation? Yeah, loss of sensation where? Right, the plantar surface of the foot? Okay. Um, again, with the MRIs, I know people were asking about this last time. I really don't remember him doing this to us on the exam. So, uh, you know, like, do your best to take a look at this. Uh, but I, I would consider this, like, lower yield. Um, but if you have time, then go ahead. I mean, I'm not not making any promises. I'm not psychic, um, but probably not the highest yield of, of things to focus on. Okay, um, then I just wanted to make sure that everyone understood this question. So if you have a fracture, so we're on the medial side of the foot. Um, somebody tell me why a weakened dorsalis pedis artery pulse is wrong. Why is that wrong? Right, it's more anterior, located in the anterior tarsal tunnel. Um, how about a weakened ability to dorsiflex the foot? Why is that wrong? Somebody? So what would you injure in the foot to cause weakness in dorsiflexion? Yeah, you're both correct, but um, say you had an injury to the foot, what nerves more, yeah, the deep fibular nerve. So if you injured the deep fibular nerve in the anterior tarsal tunnel, um, that innervates the tibialis anterior, so you'll have a weakness of dorsiflexion. Um, how about loss of sensation between the first and second digits? So this is also what nerve? Right, the deep fibular. <clears throat> and then collapse of the lateral arch. I mean, you always know, like that one just doesn't make sense because we're on the medial side of the foot. So, uh, you know, when you're studying for the exam, I would go back and even if you want to like fast forward through the lecture and find these more difficult questions and go through and make sure that you can answer um, or explain like why each of the answers are incorrect, why we did here. And I think if you can do that, like you're going to do just fine on his questions. Oh, and then I also wanted to, I think I may have misspoken earlier. 
I was looking at this slide. Um, so I believe this is actually to be all this posterior tendon. Does somebody else have that in their notes? I think you said that answer to Tara and then I wasn't sure. Does somebody have this labeled in their, in their notes so we can just make sure? Yeah, it labeled as to be all posterior. Okay, yeah, I apologize for misspeaking there. So tibialis posterior tendon, and then tendon of the fibularis longus. Yeah, make sure we have that right. Okay. Um, all right. So short and sweet tonight. Um, I hope that. What was that answer on the last one? Oh, so the answer is B. Yeah. So this is a screenshot from the lecture. I just noticed that, you know, there was like a big spread here. So I wanted to make sure that everyone understood, uh, you know, why, why B is the correct answer. The arches? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> okay, so medial and lateral longitudinal arches. So the medial longitudinal arch uh, is made up of the bones of the first three digits, the first three metatarsals, the cuneiforms, the navicular, the talus, and the calcaneus. And then the lateral arch is made up of metatarsals four and five, um, the cuboid, and then also the calcaneus. So it's shaded for you here. So everything, you know, in the light gray is lateral, and then in the dark gray is medial. And then the reason he put the star here is because the calcaneus is contributing to both the medial and lateral longitudinal arches, and then here the transverse arch. Um, the three cuneiforms and the cuboid. So really, if you just know these two pictures, you will be fine. Yeah, and um, so the reason that like I'm doing the tutoring like this with these questions, so I'm getting these questions from what he's saying in class. So make sure that you not only look at his slides, but you are listening to what he's saying. So if you haven't been taking notes based on what he's saying, like I would recommend, you know, go back and two times speed through media site and make sure um, that you're writing down what he's telling you as well. So if you do that, um, you can study the lower limb stuff straight from his lecture and you will be completely fine um, on his portion of the exam. So you really don't, like, I don't think you need to go to outside resources if you really listen to what he's saying and study his slides. All right, any, anything else I need to go back to? All right, well, if not, I'll get off here. Have a good night, you guys.